This video is going to talk about a Herco control feature called Adaptive Path. Adaptive Path allows conversational users to be able to benefit from high speed machining algorithms without the need for a CAD CAM system. But before we can talk about what Adaptive Path is and how it works, we need to discuss the problem and why do we need something like this. When we're machining a part and we have a consistent straight cut like you see in this top picture, it's very easy for us to control the amount of material that, that tool is going to engage or the angle of engagement. However, as that tool reaches into corners or where it may, um, it, it may encounter more material, you can see that the heat is going to get, begin to build up, which means it's going to cause more pressure on the tool and eventually the tool is going to be broken. And the way we have to combat that is usually um, when we're cutting like a feature like this pocket we see, because that tool is going to encounter unexpected material in all of those corners, especially, we have to slow down the speeds and feeds. We have to use coolant to control the heat. We have to use multiple peck depths to also uh, alleviate the pressures that that tool is going to encounter because we can't control that efficiently. And that's going to cause us to wear our tools only on the tip. We're pretty much wasting a majority of the usable flute length of a tool when we have to do peck cuts because we're really only wearing out the tool on the very, very um, tip of that tool. However, if we employ a algorithm that can be used in high-speed machining that will consistently control the amount of material that that tool is going to encounter, we're going to see something like the tool path on the left, very much different than the one we see on the right. The one on the right is the what we call the typical racetrack pattern and like what we saw on the previous slide where the tool just follows the shape, steps into the center, follows the shape, steps into the center, and so on. The tool path on the left shows that we are consistently altering the tool path so we never encounter more material than is specified. This is going to allow us to run much faster speeds and feeds, full depth of cut rather than peck levels. We don't need coolant many times. We can just use air to keep the chips out of the way of the cut. And this is also going to prolong our tool life because this entire situation is controlled and we're, be, we're going to be able to utilize more of the, the entire flute length of the tool and not just burn the tool up on the very, very tip. So what has Herco done to help solve this problem? Well, we've created something called Adaptive Path, and that is just a controlled engagement cutting algorithm that ensures that once we've we have determined how much material we want this tool to engage. It will never engage any more than that much material, even in the corners. It will alter the tool path to ensure that we do not encounter those high heat, high pressure situations um, of, of the tool burying itself in unexpectedly. Let's look at something as simple as a circle tool path. In a traditional tool path without these algorithms, like we pictured on the top, you can see that even though when we cut on that counterclockwise motion, every one of those passes, we're pretty much controlled in the amount of material that we encounter. However, every time we transition from one path to the next path, there at that 3 o'clock position, you can see that it's a, it's a direct step over into uncut material, which means we're 100% we're engaging the diameter of that tool. Even on a simple tool path like this, that means we have to slow our speeds and feeds. We have to um, use coolant. We have to reduce our peck levels. But using Adaptive Path, the bottom picture, even on this circle, you can see that it's going to be a continuous spiral, starting at the center and continually spir spiraling outward. That's going to ensure that we never engage that extra amount of material like we see in the stepovers on the top picture. In the Herco Control, conversationally when we create a pocket we used to have just two settings we could spiral inward starting from the outside of the pocket making its way towards the center or we could spiral outward going from the center of the pocket to the outside 
We now have two other settings, and this is where we determine the adaptive path settings that we want. Number one is a zigzag. That means the tool is going to do exactly that. In the path, it's going to zigzag. It's going to climb mill, conventional mill, climb mill, conventional mill, back and forth until it's removed all the material. The second setting is the one way. That means it's going to climb mill, pick up, reposition, climb mill, pick up, reposition, and so on. And we select which one of these we want by pulling down the pull down menu for pocket type. That's then going to give us these other two settings for our target overlap, which is the amount of material, the max that we would like this tool to ever engage, and that's a percentage of the diameter of the tool, and a minimum. The minimum is the least amount that we want this tool to engage. We never want it to just be cutting zero and just moving around without any productivity happening whatsoever. So we, this is where we set the amount of material that we want engaged. We also have a rest machining tab now. You'll notice under the red arrow there's a tab that you can select. There's a tab for the roughing tool, the rest tool, and then the finish tool. The rest tool will allow us to use a larger tool for the roughing to, to remove the majority of the material in this pocket, maybe that's pictured on the left there. And then when you can, we can use a smaller diameter tool to remo remove the rest of the material, the material that the larger tool could not get. In this case, we're using a, uh, a smaller tool that is only going to remove what you see in the yellow. And we can do that in peck depths if necessary, because then again, we're going to have a large amount of material between those two circles, and we probably, with a smaller tool that would, might be necessary, we probably won't be able to just bury it in there. So we would want to use um, some peck depths there. Now here we see an example of the the rest machining being used. In the top picture, you can take a look at the tool path that was used with a three quarter inch end mill for roughing. And you'll notice at all of the 90 degree positions, there is a little piece of material that the tool, or that the, where the tool could not pass between the features. So it's going to leave that little extra bit of material. In the bottom picture, that's after we've employed the rough the rest machining pass using a smaller end mill and you can see that it goes in and only picks up the material that the larger tool couldn't get in this case it is in the orange the little orange areas is the only place that the rest machining tool would have had to um, engage the cut so now let's take a look and see if it really does make a difference created a test part where we're using the exact same material, some 1018 cold rolled steel, the same half inch four flute end mill with the exact same speeds and feeds and the exact same pocket overlap. The difference being that when we determine the pocket overlap or the step over amount of the tool without the algorithm, it will just blindly step over that amount. When we set that percentage of overlap for the adaptive path, it will then be used as the maximum amount of material that we want engaged by the tool. So at the top we see this traditional um, racetrack tool path with all the over engagement that's, that is usually um, associated with this type of tool path and we had to do it with coolant and in um, peck depths. We then employed the adaptive path tool path using the zigzag same amount of step over only now it's being used as cutter engagement and we were able to cut it in a full depth one pass no pecs no coolant and we just use some air to control the chips in the pocket and this is what we saw um, from a time standpoint from the standard tool path we saw six minutes and three seconds using the pecs to cut this and with adaptive path, again, the exact same tool, the exact same speeds and feeds, even though we probably could have increased the feed rates and RPM, we didn't to keep this an apple to apples in, uh, comparison. That was run at 62% faster. It was 2 minutes and 23 seconds. Again, we were able to cut in one full, full depth pass. Now in a second, we're going to see a video of that part cutting but I wanted to talk a little bit about well, how close does the Herco Conversational Adaptive Path come 
to the CAM system uh, high-speed machining algorithms. And I sent this test cut to these three companies you see, WorkNC, MasterCAM, and SolidCAM, and I asked them to program it using their high-speed machining uh, systems, using the same parameters that I did, same speeds and feeds and so forth. And you can see that we're within a few seconds of they're within a few seconds of each other, and we're within a few seconds of this one. Turns out that the conversational um, adaptive path ran just a few seconds faster than any of these did, but pretty much the exact same tool path um, nonetheless. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the video that shows this example in play. <clears throat> and you can see that we're going to spiral out because spiraling is probably the most efficient way to remove this material, but it's going to spiral out as far as it can until it encounters one of the features in this test cut. And then it's going to employ the zigzag batter, pattern of back and forth, back and forth until this is completely, um, this, this test cut is completed. Now you can see that we're just using air to blow this out and we are five eighths of an inch deep in the part. Um, full depth. 